And as I said, we don't know where we are. God wants this church to do some great things. I mentioned last night just, just the fact that God's bringing people in. Kristen coming in here to, to play the piano is a huge blessing. I don't know how long it was without a piano player. Uh, at, not at all. You, man, you always had somebody in there. Amen. That's a blessing. We've had it in times in our church early on. had no piano player. And we had canned music. Someone had played the piano and the organ and recorded it on tapes. You know, tape has got little things in. You put a pencil in to get it right. Or, you know, if, it's all, if, the, if the tape comes out. We had that. And I'm glad you didn't have to have, have a time where you didn't have a piano player. That's a blessing. But the fact that God's bringing people in, and God will bring people in. Every time we have a need in our church, God sends somebody in. Amen. Uh, we, we had last year, we finished, we paid off our mortgage. Unexpectedly, somebody sent us about $9,600 out of nowhere. Not a member of our church, and it was just a blessing. God did that. Amen. And when you have a need, whether it's somebody to do a, a ministry or, or help work with the kids or whatever it is, God will send the people in. Sometimes it's just a matter of reaching somebody that's already out there. Some, there's a lot of people in this area that may have been disenfranchised at whatever church they were in, and they, they left, and they're just sitting there going, you know, my church changed, and I want, and they don't know about this church. God has them out there. There's people that move into this area. God has people to bring in here, but we don't know, so we're going to continue. And our church, we're going to continue, and God puts the people in. It's amazing. And anytime you're faithful, I find this in our church, anytime we have men and ladies faithfully going out, God sends visitors in from somewhere else. You remember when the stewards came to the Lord and said he, he, he hid his talent, he hid what the Lord gave him, and he put it in the earth. He said, there, he said I knew that thou wert a hard man and, and that you, you reaped where you hadn't straw." God will send in people where you never even sowed. He'll do it. And so this week, maybe with just this thought, if we prepare our hearts and we get ready for revival, God will send it. Yeah. But it's not going to happen overnight. It takes, it takes some work, but you can get right overnight. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You can prepare yourself tonight, or hopefully you did it Monday night, with, or even Sunday. I'm glad you guys have Friday night prayer meetings. That's, that's a blessing, and it's on your schedule. Yes. I've heard new, you know, multiple reports of people saying, man, that's just been really good. Amen. You say, what, what, you know, I, I, I was wondering, you know, what do you do? And Pastor Frost and somebody else said, we just come in, we just pray, we sing a song or something and just pray, and it's just been sweet. Yes. Yeah. So it's, it's not a big number. It's not, God doesn't care about the number. You and the Lord make a majority anyway. And since God, he said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. You can pray and get a hold of God. We get in this room and it's just sweet before service. And I'm sure that Friday, Friday evening service is just as sweet. Just praying and seeking God's face. And maybe he won't send revival to America. But if he sends it to Solid Rock Baptist Church, Amen. that's all you need. Amen. 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 Yep. Yep. So... Whether they will hear, whether they, they will forbear, you got a purpose in your heart and say, God, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to covenant with you. And then you got to have some people that come along like these Levites and go and, and help. And your pastor has a vision for this church. I'm glad he has, has a goal for this church. And it's not to be the biggest church in Bell Fountain. <coughs> if that happens, great. But that's not the goal. It's to see people saved. It's to make this ministry work Amen. for the Lord. And he can't, look, you don't drive sheep. You don't beat them to do it. You can plead and you can beg, but he's trying to lead you and say, hey, we're going this way. He's not trying to whip you and the preachers that come in here, Brother Pinson didn't, didn't beat you up. I'm not trying to beat you up this week. Here's, here's how I look at it. You got something wrong in your life. Just get it right. You know what this is? This is dumb in sign language. Some people, they just, they'll do the same wrong thing over and over again and wonder, well, how, how come God's not blessing our church? Or how, how come God's not helping? And they know what they're doing wrong. It's not the things that they, they don't know that God wants them to do or the things that they don't know they're doing wrong. They know they're doing wrong and they just don't want to give it up. Right. 
They know what their problem is, but they're, they're holding back God's uh, hand of blessing on a church and in their lives because they just say, well, I'm not going to take care of that. I, well, you know, I, I'm, I'm okay. I'll be all right. Look, get it right. It's so simple. It really is. Get in the Word of God, and, and you say, preacher talks about praying and reading your Bible and, and witnessing. That is it. I mean, it really is simple. Now, it's hard because we've got this flesh we've got to drag around. You know, everywhere I go, I've got to drag my flesh with me. I never go, I never have out-of-body experiences, amen. I don't have, you know, I don't do this transcendental meditation and, you know, I'm somewhere, what do they call that, um, remote viewing, right? That sounds like something you do on a computer or something, but the remote view, look, you're out of your body. Paul said he's willing to be rather, to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. You get out of your body, your soul's out, and you're either in heaven or hell. Right. There's no floating around the room somewhere. Everywhere you go, you take this flesh with you. If you want to do right, you're going to have to make your flesh do right. If you want to do wrong, you're going to have to succumb and do what your flesh wants to do. Right. Now, which is going to lead? Mm -hmm. You need to have a, a God or Lord, uh, a God the Father controlled spirit, controlled mind, controlled body. You need God to be able to tell your spirit what to do and your soul what to do. And then you have to drag your flesh along kicking and screaming. Amen. You say, how long will that last? Only until you die. Just until you're dead. So that seems like a long time. It's a vapor. It's a short time. It's not very long at all. And your life goes by so quick. And the older I get, the more I see. Man, it's just one right after another. I've had probably close to a dozen close people that I know. In 2019 and 20, with the Lord. My dad being one of them, Brother John Garner is another one, Brother Bob Hamlin. Man, I could just go down the list. Brother Buddy Blunkall. All these, and it's just, whew, yeah. Amen. just a vapor. Short time. Yeah. And you got to take your flesh along for the ride. And if you want to live for God, you'll do it. And I, me and my wife talk about this all the time. People do what they want to do. They do. They, it's amazing how we find time to do all of our hobbies. Bow season comes around. We find time to do that. Gets nice out. We time, find time to go play golf. Kids got sports. We have time to do that. Any God that you have in your life, you'll find time to worship. If it's not God, you'll do it. You'll worship it. And sometimes it's your flesh. Sometimes it's your kids. Sometimes it's the grandkids. But you do what you want to do. People do what they want to do. I didn't plan to be this heavy. Amen. That's not even in my notes. Amen. Might have to go another few nights, brother. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry, brother, brother John. We looked at the acts of Hezekiah and then the answer of the Levites. They came and congregated. They cleansed themselves. They counted the days and then they consecrated the vessels. And that's where we stopped last night. But look at verse number 27. Now there's verses 20 uh, on down. Uh, they, they did some things. They started singing some songs to the Lord. You know, there's something about singing. I'm glad they sang the extra song tonight because the Lord was working on my heart on something in the message. And that was just, just good. And, and it was a good song. Does Jesus care? And I needed that. Amen. And I'm glad when God gets in a service. I'm glad for a schedule, but I'm glad when God kind of gets in and changes it up a little bit. Sure. Amen. 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 That's a skeleton you work around. You need to have structure. You need to have some order. Sure. Uh, all things should be done decently and in order. Yeah. But sometimes we get so rigid that God can't move in if he wanted to. Yeah. Thank God, you know, they're up there playing a little miscommunication, but the Lord directed it. And the Lord, it, I like that song, if he hung the moon and he cares about, he put the, the Bible says he made the stars also. Yeah. Just, oh, by the way, yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, the infinite, innumerable stars. Yeah. I say infinite. He knows the number of the stars. Right. He says he calleth them by name. Right. That's pretty amazing. What a God. Amen. And he cares about me and he cares about you. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Man, thank God for that. They started singing. 
Back in the creation, it says the morning stars sang together. Man, when God created the heaven and the earth, he created that, and guess what? Those angels were praising God. They were singing. In verses 20, or 24 all the way down, they, did, they, they made reconciliation, verse 24, verse 25. They got into the house. Brother, Brother Jim and I were talking about this today, or yesterday, I can't remember. But it says that he set the Levites in the house of the Lord to worship Lord with cymbals, with psalteries, with harps, according to the commandment of David and of Gad the seer, the king's seer, and Nathan the prophet, for so was the commandment of the Lord by his prophet. Now, that's pretty amazing. You find Nathan goes up and puts his finger in David's face and says, Thou art the man. And yet David names one of his kids Nathan, and then he allows him to be his seer. Nathan the seer. Or Gad the seer, Nathan the prophet, I'm sorry. For so was the commandment of the Lord by his... He didn't, when, the, when the preacher said something he didn't like, he didn't, he didn't just, you know, I'm not going to right. talk to him anymore. Right. Here's somebody who rebuked the king to his face, and the king could have said, <laughs> fall on him. Yeah. Benaiah, kill him. Amen. He'd had no problem killing that Amalekite in chapter 1 of 2 Samuel. He said, could you imagine? he just say, fall on him. And somebody just goes over and smites the guy you want to have dead. Yeah. That's power right there. Right. Yeah. But David repented, and he got right with God, and he got right with the man of God too. You can't get right with God without getting right with God's people. Amen. Just throw that in, oh, by the way. Yeah. Verse 26, it says, They stood with the instruments of David and the priests with the trumpets. And Hezekiah commanded to offer the burnt offering upon the altar. And when the burnt offering began, the song of the Lord, began also with the trumpets and with the instruments ordained by David, king of Israel. And all the congregation worshipped. All the congregation worshipped. And the singers sang. We've had some of that. And the trumpeters sounded. And all this continued until the burnt offering was finished. And when they had made an end of offering, the king and all the, that were present with him bowed themselves and worshipped. Moreover, Hezekiah the king and the princes, verse 30, commanded the Levites to sing praise unto the Lord with the words of David. They were singing psalms. You know what they were doing? They were singing in Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 19, singing and making melody in their hearts to the Lord. They weren't, the Bible says, be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be ye filled with the Spirit, singing and making melody in your heart unto the Lord. Singing unto yourselves in psalms and hymns, that's what it is, and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody unto your heart to the Lord, in your heart to the Lord. They were singing the song of the Lord up there in verse number 27, and they were singing praise unto God with the words of David. They were singing, The Lord is my shepherd. Amen. They're singing some songs. Amen. They're singing some psalms. We sing some psalms uh, of David in our church. We sing, the law of the Lord is perfect. We sing those psalms. There's some things that when, sometimes when you just get alone and you just sing some of these psalms, it's good to have the Word of God put to song. Amen. It helps you to remember the Word of God. And I've never actually ever heard a psalm sung in Hebrew the way it was originally sound. One day we're going we're to be able to actually do that and hear that. I wonder how, how they sang them. Right. I wonder what the tune was. I wonder how David sang his songs. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder how the apostles Paul sang his song. I wonder how the Bible says in, in the book, in the gospel of Mark, I believe it is, it says they went out and they sung a hymn yeah. at, at the last, we call the last supper uh, with Jesus after Judas has gone out. And the Bible says they sang a hymn. Yeah. I wonder what Jesus sounded like when he sang. Amen. Uh, the Bible talks about the Lord will shower over us with singing. Yeah. I wonder what it's going to sound like when we hear Him sing. Now, we should be singing to the Lord. You say, I don't have a good voice. If the Lord didn't give you a good voice, give it back to Him. Amen? <laughs> sing. <laughs> God wants you to sing. He says, sing praises unto the Lord. Sing praises. Sing praises unto the Lord. Yeah. Amen. In one verse, He tells you to sing praises three times. Yeah. We need to sing to the Lord. Amen. The only bird that doesn't sing is a buzzard. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if that's true. I'm not an ornithologist or anything, uh, but I just, I like, it sounds catchy. Amen. There's a lot of buzzards that don't sing in church either. Amen. 
They all sang. Verse number 28. The singers sang, they worshipped, and then it says in verse number 30, they sang the words of David and of Asaph the seer. They sang praises with gladness. They weren't singing, "'Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus." Come on. They weren't singing a, a funeral dirge. Come on. They were singing with gladness. If you're happy... Let your face know about it. Amen. They sang praises with gladness and they bowed their heads and worshipped. We miss some of that in churches. Yeah. You can praise God without really worshipping, but you can't worship God without praising Him. Amen. You can say hallelujah, you can say amen, but can you, you, you can't really pray, praise God or you can't really worship God just with saying words. You worship is done internally to God. Praise is done outward, and that's what people see. Yes. When we say praise the Lord, it's an imperative sentence yeah. telling you to praise the Lord. Right. I'm saying praise the Lord, and you should go, yeah, let's praise the Lord. He says, come praise the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. together yeah. it, it, it's a corporate thing when the church gathers together and praises God. Amen. To Amen. God be the glory, one of our songs. I don't know if we sang that song. Do we sing that one? We sang one verse of it. To God be the glory. Yeah. Great things he hath done. Man, we should be praising God because not because we want to all the time, but because he deserves our praise. He's worthy of praise. Right. You find all the way from Genesis to Revelation, he is worthy. Revelation chapter 5 says to the Lamb, Thou art worthy to receive glory and honor and power and majesty. For, for thy pleasure they are, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Yeah. Amen. That's an interesting thing. They are and were created. Yes. You know what the Bible says? He says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Yes. Yes. Amen. God hasn't really created anything since Genesis except for people being saved. Amen. He's given you new life. He's created life in you through the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. That's, that's, they are, the Bible says, and were created. He says they sang with gladness, but then they bowed their heads and worshipped. There's something about bowing your head in honor to the King of kings and Lord of lords and saying, I'm not even worthy to look up. Mm -hmm. Good. You're so great, God. Yeah. You're so powerful. They bowed their heads. And look in verse number 31. It says, Then Hezekiah answered and said, Now you have consecrated yourselves to the Lord. Come near and bring sacrifices and thank offerings into the house of the Lord. And the congregation brought in sacrifices and thank offerings. Isn't that good, Pastor Frost? The preacher said, you need to bring in sacrifices and, verse number 31, thank offerings. And the congregation brought in sacrifices and thank offerings. Isn't that interesting? He said it, and they did what he said. That's a strange thing in 2021. Yeah. That's a strange thing in the Laodicean church time where we're living. That's, that's a strange thing where everybody that's Laodicea means we have our rights, the rights of the people. Yep. And, and that's where we are. Man, how many people, we have our rights. We, got, we can do this. And liberty, we can do whatever we want. Mm -hmm. Even if it goes against the word of God, I'm free in Christ. Yeah. I'm not under the, you hear people, I'm not under the law. I'm not under the Old Testament. We're not un, in Leviticus anymore. Well, you're not even under Galatians or Ephesians. Right. Right. <laughs> Come on. You got to get under something. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. He said, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Yeah. And with, oh, I'm not in the Old Testament. I know we're not in the Old. I know when I am. I know when I live. I know where I am in history. I know where I am in God's timeline. I know how God's working right now. Yeah. I understand that. But people don't want to be bound by anything. They don't want to be bound by the, the law of liberty in Christ Jesus. Right. There's the old law that can only condemn, but you're in the law of liberty right now. Right. It, it, it's not, I can do whatever I want. No, the liberty is, I don't, I'm not bound by the law. I can do whatever he wants me yes. to do. Amen. Not bound. Look, people, uh, I go down that rabbit trail. I don't want to do that. But they offer liberty. They offer people liberty, but they're servants to sin. They're servants to, to wickedness and to... to uh, uh, 
really just to do whatever they want. That's, that's the mantra right now. It's Satanism. You know what the mantra of, of Satanism is, the, the, the uh, Satanic church? It's do as thou wilt. And it's in churches. No, a preacher's going to tell me what to do. I'm not going to, I don't have to do that. Do as thou wilt. No, 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 no. Jesus said, not my will. As God in the flesh, he said, not my will, but thine yep. be done. Come on, that's good. He says in verse number 31, they, he said, bring sac sacrifices and thank offerings. And they did. And as many as were of a free heart, burn offerings. Remember what I said about the Levites? They did more. They went back in verse number 19. It says they, they took, made, got the vessels and consecrated vessels and sanctified. That wasn't even what the king commanded. They did, they did more than what they were asked. And in verse number uh, 31, as many as were of a free heart, they brought burnt offerings. He said, bring sacrifices and thank offerings. And they said, okay, we'll do that. But we're going to do a little bit more. Now, you know what people do when you talk about offerings? They grab their wallet or their purse. Mm -hmm. That's not what he's talking about. Right. They brought something. They did something. They brought something. They brought a physical offering. They brought a lamb or they brought a, a bullock, whatever they brought. And then some brought free will offerings. It could have been meal. It could have been, it could have been uh, uh, some type of oil or something they would have brought to the Lord. But it was a, a free will offering that they brought to God of their own accord. Yes. Mm. Those that were of a free heart. And then verse 32, the number of the burnt offerings which the congregation brought was three score and ten bullocks. That's 70 bullocks and 100 rams. And 200 lambs, and all these were for a, burnt, for a burnt offering unto the Lord. And the consecrated things were 600 oxen and 3,000 sheep. 3,000 sheep. Yeah. But the priests were too few, so that they could not flay all the burnt offerings. Wherefore, their brethren, the Levites, did help them till the work was ended, and until the other priests had sanctified themselves. For the Levites were more upright in heart to sanctify themselves than the priests. The priests were supposed to be sanctified, and I'll get to that in a second. But the Levites, they sanctified themselves first. Even before the priests who were supposed to be ready to sacrifice were able to do so. And it says, and also the burnt offerings were in abundance with the fat of the peace offerings and the drink offerings for every burnt offering. So the service of the house of the Lord was set in order. And Hezekiah rejoiced. And all the people that God had prepared the people for the thing was done suddenly. We've looked at the acts of Hezekiah, the answer of the Levites, and we'll look just for a few minutes at the assistance of the brethren. Lord, I pray that you help us tonight. Help me to say what you'd have me say in the few short minutes that we have. I pray that you'll apply it to hearts. Lord, maybe those watching online would be under conviction, Lord. Help them, Lord, just as if they were sitting here. Help them not to be distracted by uh, some notification on their phone or on their computer. Lord, I pray that they'd silence all, any other distraction. And I pray that you'll help us to tune in tonight. I pray that you help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at verse number 28. The assistance of the brethren. It wasn't just for the king. And it wasn't just for the priests and the Levites, the special class of people. The Bible calls that in Revelation chapter 2, calls it the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Where you have the laity down here. I don't even like that term, layman. I understand what people mean by that because they're not a pastor. They don't hold an office. They're not a deacon. But that idea of the ladies down here and the preachers way up here. Listen, there's a different office. Paul said, I magnify my office. But when it comes to going to God, we all have the, we're, on the same, we're on the same level. I don't have some special inroad to God that you can't get on because you've never been ordained or you've never had the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. And I'm some that's. The clergy. Right. I hate it when I go to the hospital. I got a, you know, I got a clergy. I go in with them clergy. I always think it's just funny. You got the clergy and then the lady. Right? The lady, they're way down here and they got to go to us, the scholars and those who've got the certification and the stamp on their forehead uh, that, that, right. that's going to be what it's going to be. Yeah. But um, oh, we've got the approval. Now, I go to God. Amen. I bow my knees. For this cause, I bow my knees uh, to to Jesus Christ, yeah. unto whom the world is crucified, unto me, yeah. and I unto the world. Thank you, Lord. I, 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 I say, Lord, I say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. That's it. I pray just like you do. Yeah. 
Pastor Frost goes to God just like you do. He doesn't have some special inroad to God. He can go to God just like you, and you can go to God just like he does. Man, thank God for that. Amen. You see, in verse 28, they hastened to the king's words. They didn't wait. Remember with the Levites, it says in verse number and I had it down, verse number 17, they began on the first day of the first month, the same day that Hezekiah said, hey, we've got to open the doors, we've got to repair the doors. The Levites and the priests started working. They started doing what was commanded. And guess what? When the king said it and the priests and the Levites did it, the rest of the people said, man, we better get involved with this. You say, well, you know, I'm not, a spe I'm not in that special class. I already said it. There's no special class here. Everybody can get involved. And if everybody in this room got involved in the work of the ministry and the edifying, uh, perfecting of the saints, work of the ministry here, guess what? There'd be other people that you could minister to. Amen. God will send the people in. But if everybody's going to be a sponge and everybody's going to be a reservoir for the preacher to have to fill and pump up every week, why would God send other people in that need help? Because he can't do it all. He can't make all the phone calls. Yeah. He can't send all the text messages. Yeah. He can't go to everybody's house and visit. Yeah. He's got to have some other people come in. Amen. So the preacher gets up like Hezekiah and says, Hey, God put it in my heart. We're going to have revival. Yeah. And then the, the, the priests, the ones that are in already, they're saying, Hey, we got to get right. We got to, we got to start doing We got to open the doors. We got to repair the doors. We got to light the lamps. We got to get everything ready. Amen. We got to put the show bread out. We got to get the, the candlestick lit. We got to get the, the altar of incense burning again. Yeah. Man, one of the things that you've done for that altar of incense is get those prayers going up on Fridays. Yeah, amen. And that's a amen. blessing. Amen. And so there are some people that have already done that part of the priest, done that part of the Levite, and they're working. They've gone into the inner chamber, and they've gone in to the, the, to the uh, holy place, and they're cleaning things up. But God can have some other people, and you might be some of these other people. You might be watching online, and you might be that other, those other people that need to say, hey, I'm part of the congregation. And I'm going to do right. Amen. I'm going to bring in the thank offerings. Yes. Man, just being thankful to God. Yeah. If you have been forgiven much, you love much, the Bible says. Yeah. And if you're really thankful, nobody will have to wonder. Yeah. Amen. I tell my kids that uh, all the time, and not all the time recently, but you know, I used to tell them all the time. A thankful heart has a what? Thankful. Has a thankful mouth. Yeah. If you're thankful, nobody will have to wonder whether you are. The Bible says, if any man love God, the same shall be known of him. You love the Lord, nobody have to wonder. I wonder if they love the Lord. And if you're thankful to God and to others, nobody's going to have to wonder. That's right. yeah. If you're thankful to the preacher, nobody's going to have to wonder whether you're thankful. Yeah. He's not going to go, I wonder if the people appreciate me. Mm. Got to have Pastor Appreciation Month, and you got to put it out on Facebook so everybody's reminded that they need to appreciate their pastor. Right. Why don't you just pastor appreciation year this year? And then next year it's going to be pastor appreciation year then too. That's good. He doesn't need the gifts. Once a year we're going to tell our preacher. Is that okay to say? No. Uh, once a year we're going to see. No, stop right there. All right, give an invitation. All right. he did, Paul said, not that I desire a gift, but that I desire fruit that may abound to your account. Come on. There were some needs that he had. You take care of your preacher. It's a blessing to be able to give. But that's not what he's wanting. Just appreciate the time and the labor that goes into preparing three times a week to have a Sunday morning, a Sunday night, and Wednesday night something for you. Amen. And you know what? If my wife made dinner, and I've done this sometimes working late and different things, just, you know, I've not been home for dinner. That's kind of disappointing for her. Disappointing for me because she's a good cook. But I've worked, I've worked sometimes, you know, get up in the morning, leave before the kids get up, and I've gotten home after they're in bed sometimes, just different, different things going on. And, you know, if she gets up every day and she plans all day and she's, you know, hours before the meal she's setting up, and I call her every day and say, I'm not going to make it. She's prepared the meal. You know, after a while, she'd stop putting her heart into it. She'd say, what's the use? And preacher gets up. He's out. Listen, they say, when do you prepare your message? I prepare my message Sunday night, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, yeah. Thursday, Friday. I'm working all week to have something. Just like you ladies, you go out and you go to the grocery store. You don't do all your shopping on the way home from church to cook the Sunday dinner. 
you've planned it out. You might, might have gone shopping during the week and you have different ingredients and you get them together and you plan and you prepare. And the preacher does the same thing. And he's going to the storehouse of God and saying, I need a little of this and a little of that and I'm going to put this together and I'm going to make something on Sunday morning because I know what these people need. Right. Uh, just like we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was tempted in all points like as we are yet without sin, just like Jesus Christ, our high priest, uh, he's, he's, he's been able to be touched with our, our infirmities and our feelings. You should have a preacher that's able to be touched, able to be uh, accessible, not some, you know, untouchable somewhere that you just, oh, if you're in his good graces, you can call him on the phone or get through to his secretary and she'll make sure he gets the message. And if he feels like it, he'll get back to you. You don't have that kind of preacher here. No. You can call him any time. Right. Amen. 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 He was on the phone with somebody today. He said their name and he just took the call or made the, made the phone call to call them back. Look, he's not, I'm in my office hours nine to five. No, you have a preacher that, that, that you can go to him and he knows you and you're known of him. Amen. He knows you and I should say he's known of you. Paul said, you are our epistle written on our heart, not with fleshly tables uh, of stone or not, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. Amen. Listen, he, your preacher knows you. And so when he works on Monday and he's thinking, what am I going to preach? What am I going to give on Sunday? He's thinking of you in mind. You say, well, did you have me in mind when you preached on Sunday? Of course I did. You don't go to your wife or, or, you know, when you're growing up, your mom. Were you thinking about me when you made dinner? Of course she was. She made something special for you. And your preacher's putting something special to you. And he's not preaching at you, but he's preaching to you. He's giving you something. They hastened to the king's words. They all came in and said, look, we're getting involved with this. And pray that God will send the people in to get involved, but you get involved. Yeah. They hastened. Then verse number 29 and 30 mentioned a little bit. They hallowed the name of the Lord. They praised God. They hallowed the name of the Lord. Amen. And then they helped with the work. Yeah. This kind of jumps back into the priests and the Levites, but it says the priests were too few. Yeah. So they could not flay which is basically cut up, we would say fillet, uh, cut up all the sacrifices for the burnt offerings. Wherefore, their brethren, the Levites, did help them. I mentioned this on Tuesday. Not all Levites were priests, but all the priests were Levites. So the priests weren't ready. They hadn't been doing their job. So you know what? Some Levites said, we're going to step in and help. Hey, I, can, I got a knife. I can come in and help. This wasn't something that was only the priest could do this. They could set this up and they could do this and get this thing ready. You say, well, I'm not called to preach. I'm not called to do this and that. You can help with something. Amen. 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 You can find something you can do for the Lord. Oh, you don't, you don't know. I, I just have a rough background and I can't. Look, you can go out. I talked about it yesterday, I think, with being a silent partner, just going out and helping somebody. Two are better than one. For they have a reward for their labor. If I go out by myself and knock on a door, I look like a one weirdo. But if you come with me, we'll look like two weirdos. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. That's a blessing. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I'd rather be with somebody else and both of us bear the reproach of Christ than by myself. Yeah. Right. It, it's a good thing. It, bear, it lends credence and credibility to what you're actually doing. It's not just some one lone guy out here. Hey, come to my church. Well, who's the pastor? I am. In our church, who's the piano player? I am. <laughs> right? I'll sing a special too. It's kind of funny. Look, I got somebody in my church standing next to me. It lends credibility to, to what we're doing. And your preacher will go out and knock doors by himself, but he shouldn't have to. Amen. Sometimes you only have a couple come out, and one's on one side of the street, one's on the other side of the street. I like to do two at a time. He sent them out two by two. The Lord did. Let me tell you, it's better to go with somebody else. They helped with the work. So the Levites did help them, verse number 34, till the work was ended. We'll work till Jesus comes. We'll work till Jesus comes. We'll work till Jesus comes. Then we'll be gathered home. Hey, I said you got to drag your flesh around only till you die. 
but it may not be that long. We're looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Hey, He's coming back, and we want to be ready. If He comes before I die, I don't want to be the one, you know, just quit on God, and then the next Sunday He shows up. Could you imagine? Could you imagine right before Jesus comes back, you said, I'm done. Man, I'd hate that. How ashamed would you be if you quit on God and the rapture happened the next day or the next week? First Sunday, you say, I'm just not going in today. Sunday afternoon, the rapture happens. Man, you're going to stand before God and you're going to be ashamed before Him at His coming. So don't quit because you don't know. Watch, therefore, for you know not at what hour the Son of Man cometh. you got to be ready. And so part of that is just working till Jesus comes. And if He calls you home in death... Work till you die. Serve the Lord. They all worked till the work was done. Till the work was ended and until the other priests had sanctified themselves. For the Levites were more upright. They helped with the work and then their hearts were right. Is your heart right? It says they were more, it says they were more upright in heart to sanctify themselves than the priests. That's amazing. I I know some Christians that are better Christians than I am, and they don't have a title. They don't have an office in the church, but they're, I would say, man, they read their Bible more than I do. They pray more than I do, and they're just a layman. There's a lot of people at Solid Rock Baptist Church, and it would please your pastor if at the judgment seat of Christ he saw you way up in front of the line. Amen. Amen. No pride in that. You know, there's a lot of pastors' wives that are going to be way far ahead of their husbands. Mm-hmm. Amen. Julie, you can say amen right there. Amen. amen. <laughs> there's a lot of preachers' wives. There's a lot of just some little old widow somewhere that's just praying and, and holding up their preacher in prayer yeah. that when that judgment seat of Christ comes, when, when the day of Christ comes, guess what? They're going to stand up there and you're going to have to get a telescope to find them. They're going to be so far up ahead. Amen. Amen. They say, well, I'm the preacher. I'm a Sunday school teacher. Listen, there's no contest here. My dad used to say this. When when it's all said and done, all the marbles are going to be put in the right spaces. Everybody's going to get credit. If you build on another man's foundation, guess what? He's getting the credit. I think you mentioned that with Brother Pinson on Monday night. This church is... Uh, redounding to his account. Yeah. The, 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 the blessings and the rewards that, that Solid Rock gets, he's getting some of those too yeah. because of the investment that he made in your preacher. Right. And you'll get rewards based on the people that you reach. Yeah. Their hearts were right. It wasn't even their title. They weren't even a priest. They didn't even have the, you know, they didn't even have the, the, the usher badge. But they helped. They didn't have a a job description, but they said, hey, I can help. And if God's people would just get a hold of that thought, I can help. Get your heart right. Help with the work and get your heart right. He said they were more upright to sanctify themselves than the priests. See, the assistance of the brethren. I'll give you the last two points here. The adoration of the people. Preparation came first in verse number 36. They rejoiced and all the people that God had prepared the people. When's the last time you let God prepare you? That's a whole lot better than me trying to get everything ready and make sure it's all right. Let God prepare you. Crossing all the T's, dotting all the I's, that's good. But listen, let, out of the ordinary, God just, Lord, help me. I need you to, I need you to do something different. Amen. I, I'm, I'm in accordance to your word, but I want you to do something special. This was different. This wasn't just religion. This wasn't just something, oh, ho-hum, we're just going, going through the motions, playing church. Hezekiah said, God put it in my heart, and I want to make a covenant with God, and we're going to do something different around, different around here. Having a revival meeting and having prayer meetings and having those things, that's something a little bit different. And God is preparing Solid Rock Baptist Church. Whether you're seeing it or not, I'm seeing it. God is preparing you for something bigger. Before Peter ever caught the fish, he had to drop in the net. 
And their brethren were on the shore mending their nets. And guess what? They called out to their brethren and said, hey, come and help us. And they came out and helped them. Yep. Hey, they, listen, God has, God has a multitude out there that can be reached with the gospel. Let him prepare Solid Rock Baptist Church yep. to do it. Yep. Part of that is with the building here. Part of that is getting this, well, you got beautiful chairs here, got this all set up. Man, it's nice. People come in here and say, man, it looks good in here. And it's not for praise of men. It's not, but it shouldn't look, look like a dump. Right. Right. Amen. Thank God for that. Amen. The adoration of the people because the preparation came first. Praise was the result. And you'll look back in a year, two, three, four, and you go, man, I'm glad we prepared for what God is doing right now. You know where you prepare? Right here. Right here. You get ready for God to do something right here and let him prepare you. I won't give the last point in my... I'll give you the last point. The adoration of the people, but then the announcement to the whole country. Read, ver, read chapter 30. And you find in verse number 6 and verse number 10 that the posts went out. Yeah, that's right. Yep. The posts went out. They, they had the Passover. They couldn't do it in the first month because the thing was done suddenly, verse number 36. And so they had to wait till the, the, the second month to do it. Yep. And so they said, hey, go tell everybody. Amen. Who? Everybody. The posts went out. And the people mocked them. They laughed at them. But then some came. And that's the same result you're going to get. It's the same result Paul got on Mars, Hills, uh, or Mars Hill, where some mocked, others, others laughed. Some said, we will hear thee again, but some believed. Amen. That's what you're going to And you don't know. I said at the beginning of the message, you don't know where you are in the process. So you're just going to take the word of God, and you're just going to go, <sighs> and you're going to sow it. If you sow it sparingly, the Bible says you're going to reap sparingly. Yeah. But if you sow bountifully, You'll reap also bountifully. So what do you do? Well, I'm, we, don't only have, we only have a few, so we can only go out a little bit. Hey, so much the more. We need to sow more because there are so few. And so few days left to sow. We, there's no lack in seed. And he'll order as many gospel tracts as you can put out. I have to order gospel tracts like three times a year. I really need to order more every time. <laughs> but it's a big chunk of money. Yeah. That's a blessing to me. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm excited that God's doing that. And I hope your pastor, he's got to order these signs. He's got to order different things. If he's got to order tracks every month just to keep up with the demand that you're putting out in this, this town, he's not going to shed a tear. He's not going to be sad one bit. And God will send the increase. Right. He'll do it. But we got to be prepared. That's this week. Lord, I pray that you help us. Help us to prepare ourselves. Help us to get involved with this thing. And every person in this church take ownership of this ministry and take a part in this ministry. The harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Lord, I pray that we'll fulfill the Lord's command and that will pray the Lord of the harvest, that he'll send forth labors into his harvest. Lord, we ask you to send people into this place. But until they come, help us to be prepared to receive them. Help us to not sow sparingly, but to sow bountifully. And we ask all these things in that name which is above every name, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. His name we pray. Amen. Closed, if you would please, everyone standing, every head bowed, every eye closed. If you know 100% for sure you're going to heaven when you die, would you slip your hand up as testimony to heaven? God sees those hands. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If God spoke to your heart in some way, shape, or form, Christian, would you slip your hand up as testimony to heaven? God sees those hands all over the place. Father, we sure do love you. We thank you for your goodness and your grace. Lord, I thank you for the message. Lord, I pray, dear God, that we would put feet to our prayers. God, I pray you'd help us and strengthen us, help us to be obedient to the great commission which you've given us.
And Lord, I pray, dear God, that you'd help to prepare our hearts tonight to do your work. We love you, we praise you, we thank you for all that you've done for us. In Jesus' precious holy name we pray, the power of his blood we plead. Amen. The piano's playing. If you need to come, you come on. God is faithful, amen. Let God have his way in your heart and life. You come on. If you raise your hand, you come on. Don't you disobey the Spirit of God, amen. If God's been working in your heart, you come on. Let the Spirit lead.